It is, and we welcome you back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. All right, how many times have we talked to guests on this show that say marijuana is good, it should be decriminalized, it should be uh, used for this purpose, that purpose. Of course, we have the push to uh, use uh, marijuana for recreational purposes. We have it in Colorado, we have it in Washington State, and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So happy that 18-year-olds uh, or whatever they are can now get marijuana uh, at the store and uh, dispensing machines and all that. Um, and I have argued, and I'm no expert, that, hey, this is a bad thing for a lot of reasons. And joining us now is Dr. Hans Breiter. He's a professor of psychiatry at Northwestern University and the lead author of a new study on uh, marijuana and uh, some of the dangers uh, that marijuana uh, poses. And uh, doctor, welcome, sir. Thank you. It's a privilege to be on the air with you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, you know, let's talk about it. I, I have always uh, said, as a total layman here, that what sense does it make to, to say that it's okay, it's harmless, it's, it's, it's no, no problem to, to, to smoke something or take anything that is mind-altering, that, that alters your brain? I mean, it has to have ill effects, either immediate and or long-term. Um, this this is an important issue, you know. In, in life, as we know, most things come with both positive and negative aspects. Um, you know, you 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 get your dream pickup truck, but you know, okay, maybe it's a gas guzzler. Okay, it's, it's it's powerful, but it's got gas guzzling issues. The same thing with regard to any medication or any any uh, um, uh, item that people propose uh, for purely medical reasons. It's probably got some issues around side effects and some 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 costs to be considered. I come into this as, a, as an addiction scientist. Um, I do neuroscience, brain imaging, dabble in a bit of mathematical psychology. It's uh, and we, we kind of apply these approaches to looking at what goes on with healthy cognition and then cognition that's been somewhat altered by exposure to drugs. Um, we had a paper earlier this year where we looked at what happens with uh, uh, people who use marijuana and contrasted it with people who were, had schizophrenia and used marijuana. So it was a four-group design. And that study got us quite concerned uh, in, in the context that these were heavy users, heavy chronic users, using more than 20 joints a week for many, many years. And these people, when you looked at changes in the brain from the marijuana and compared it to people who had schizophrenia and did or did not use marijuana, what we saw is that a number of the changes we were seeing in otherwise healthy people who used a lot of marijuana, some of these changes exactly fell on top of the changes you saw with schizophrenia alone and were worsened in the schizophrenics by adding marijuana. Uh, so well, it got it got us very concerned. We didn't know how to interpret this data because, you know, it's it's again looking at long-term users, and it was a cross-sectional study. Because uh, so obviously this is not causal. It's again an association. So it raised a large number of questions, like many scientific studies do. And and these and, are ca I'm sorry, these are casual users over a long period of time, correct? So it raised the next issue, which led to this, the study that we just published and is the study right. of interest right now. And in in, uh, we, we decided, hey, we've got to start taking a look at people who aren't heavy users. What happens with casual use? And so we um, you know, looked at people who are regular, moderate, but casual users. And what we mean by this is they don't meet criteria for drug dependence. They have had no interaction with the law about this use. They're not having problems at school. They're not having problems with work. They're not having problems in their relationships. They're not having problems with family. And when we say problems, I mean problems even to the sort like uh, your mom saying, hey, you know, can you do your wash? Can you stop smoking so much weed? I mean, simple things like this. None of these subjects had issues around their families, their, 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 their relationships, their work. Um, they, had, they smoked marijuana a range from only once a week to seven times a week, um, as few as a, a few cigarettes and marijuana yeah. a week, a few joints to up, uh, up, upwards above 20 joints. So it was a, quite a range. But the important piece here is none of them are what we would call heavy chronic dependent and yet and yet parts of the brain 
uh, were altered that you certainly, uh, that, that affect what, cognitive abilities, et, et cetera? Well, we focused on two regions of the brain that, that are actually quite important for addiction research and are independently quite important for understanding uh, judgment and decision making and emotional memory. So one region of the brain, we're gonna just refer to it with the acronym NAC. It stands for nucleus accumbens. But it's the hub of a lot of regions in the brain that process what is good and what is bad for you and how you make judgments and decisions around what is good and bad for you. Um, and when I say judgments and decisions, that includes judgments and decisions in, in social contexts and having to do with um, social influence and things of this sort. Um, it turns out that this region of the brain that's involved uh, as a hub around judgment and decision making also is important for mediating the pleasurable aspects of, of drugs of abuse. You know, doctor, uh, I just ha happened to have a story in front of me uh, out of Denver. Of course, uh, we know about Colorado's legalization for recreational use of marijuana, um, where uh, this uh, woman who was on the phone with a 911 dispatcher when she was shot to death by her husband, um, in addition to investigating whether or not uh, the 911 operator handled the call properly and got the police there uh, fast enough, obviously not fast enough to save her, but if it followed procedure, we now find out, uh, according to the AP, that uh, this man accused of killing his wife uh, ate marijuana infused candy uh, before the attack. We also uh, get studies uh, out of uh, Colorado that show there's a, a huge spike in, um, in, the, uh, in the death rate. Uh, drivers who are using marijuana and driving their car are involved in fatal accidents at a much higher rate now than before they legalized this. And, you know, I've had people, so-called experts, come on and say, oh, no, 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 you can't, you, you can't drive a car in marijuana. Nobody's going to drive like, a, like they drive drunk on alcohol with marijuana. But, if, but it's, it's proving whether it's the same kind of effect or not, that's proving to be problematic. So with all these, with your study and other studies and the IQ study that showed even recreational use, moderate use, lowers IQ over the long term and, and, and these kinds of uh, instances. Why on earth is there a national push, do you believe, almost an accepted national push, to legalize this drug? It's, it's a very good question. It's, it's important that we actually bring much more uh, uh, fact and science on into the, the, the discussion. Um, what seems to be missing is, is that we do know a bit about marijuana effects, especially on the developing brain. Um, one of the most incontrovertible facts of the, of the addiction research uh, uh, effort with marijuana is that the earlier you start using marijuana as, as an adolescent, the worse its effects. And it's, it's, what's interesting is you don't hear that being discussed in the context of what should be the legal age at which it's used. Um, we what, what about, Doctor, I don't want to run out of time before I get a chance to ask you this. What about the gateway? Aspect, and I don't know if it's fair to ask you that. I don't know if you if you've addressed that, but uh, the marijuana being a gateway drug to to harder drugs, cocaine, heroin, etc. That hypothesis in humans is still a, a major question, but in animals, the animal research is pretty solid and consistent in, in pointing to uh, marijuana uh, exposure in animals, leading to a greater proclivity to self-administer harder drugs of, of abuse. Um, and none of us really debate any more the gateway hypothesis with regards to the animal research. That's interesting. Hey, doctor, fascinating uh, conversation. Uh, thank you for taking the time, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll talk again. And um, you know, I hope this uh, this is widely discussed because it needs to be. Absolutely, you're doing a fundamental service to get this information out there. I thank you personally. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Hans Breiter, professor of psychiatry at Northwestern University and the lead author of the uh, new study on, uh, on marijuana and uh, its effects on the human brain. You know, <laughs> how a parent, any parent, could be in favor of legalization of marijuana for recreational use is just beyond me. And the argument that, well, we have alcohol legal. Yeah, so let's, you know, why don't we legalize cocaine and heroin, if that's your logic? Um, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It'll lead to more deaths. And don't tell me that you don't know someone who's been on pot for a, law, a long time and that you could tell. All right, we're coming back with Gimme Five on The Steve Malzberg Show.